Hello there. Kyle Katarn here. And the Vendu. Coming back for another reaction to The Mandalorian. That's right. Episode 7, Chapter 3 still. Well, it's 23 technically, but yes. Shout out to Nerd Chronic for editing this reaction for us and sneaking it past the Disney blockade. Also, shout out to Brian Ward for this sexy new overlay that we've got going on. Very nice. Yes. 23 chapters of The Mandalorian. That's so many. Like, when this season is complete and we can binge all three seasons, that's going to be fun. Yeah, man. Like, each season and story has, like, had its own flow and its own its own um, theme, I suppose. Its own different color scheme. So it's like... No, totally. There's been, like, a specific vibe per season. I think that's fair. Like, the first season was totally, like, low-level RPG quests. And then, this, and like, very lone wolf and cub. And the second season was more of, like building a squad and like going on like a group adventure yes. and now this third season is like more of an epic scale it's like reclaiming the home world getting all of the people together uniting all the mandalorians you know yeah you know, it's like very lord of the rings but D D at the same time because we're focusing so much on the dark saber still totally, and like totally. building the story around this one object yeah last week's episode ended with kind of a crazy finish Din Djarin has given Bo-Katan the Darksaber, uh, claiming that he didn't give it to her just now. She's actually been the owner of it for quite a while, ever since she saved him from the Mines of Mandalore. It didn't really sit right with me when I first watched it, but I've been thinking about it more and more, and you know what? I do accept the logic. Like, Din Djarin is kind of the... He, he's kind of like the faceless mercenary who gets involved in other people's quests yes you know 100 percent. he doesn't really have like identity is the wrong word but he doesn't really have a mission statement beyond like helping others do their things and yes. i don't really see him as the ruler of mandalore just sort of like the helper of mandalore if that makes sense like he's like the guy who's there very willing to be a squad mate and to help other people like fulfill their objectives but it's like, true he returned grogu to the jedi Grogu made a choice to come back to him. So his quest is kind of over and he hasn't really had a new objective since then. He's just kind of along for the ride. Being Bo-Katan's right-hand man, I think is a good place for him to be. And he's right. He's like her number one supporter right now. It's ironically. True. Like, well, besides the armorer, which is very strange. I don't know. I don't fully trust her because I think she's rook cast. But on the other hand, I do see her having like an evolution of her own philosophy. And she realizes that like not every Mandalorian can be a child of the watch. Not everyone's going to walk the way of the Mandalore. And if Mandalorians in general are going to survive, they need to get past these like orthodoxy differences, you know? Yeah. Speaking of an expansion of philosophy, can we just talk about again how amazing Jack Black and Lizzo's characters were and the absolute <laughs> costume creation that went They were fun. Into? They were super fun. Like um, Lizzo's big holographic floating flower thing that followed her around was so fucking cool. Jack Black's multi, like two-toned curly Santa beard, essentially. Yeah. But, like, the beard game was on point. Crazy beard Imperial point. captain, like shipment captain. He was like, I wasn't really Imperial. They just gave me a job and gave me a bunch of money. Like, and then Christopher Lloyd, who became like basically a Scooby Doo villain in that episode. <laughs> completely. Like, yeah, that was great. there was there was a lot of love that was put into that episode from multiple multiple friends. Um, contemporary, like new school Star Wars, seems to have a trend of like taking iconic heavyweight actors and then kind of wasting them. And I don't mean that necessarily as a criticism, but just they're, they're in such brief roles. Yes. Like Christopher Lloyd in that episode, Werner Herzog in season one, uh, Max von Sydow in The Force Awakens. Like they take these brilliantly talented actors and give them like a single scene or like a handful of lines. And it's like, okay, wow, that just happened. That's in Star Wars now. Like it's cool, but like it's always blinking. You'll miss it. Like they give us these tiny yeah. little bite-sized pieces of these performances. Danny Trejo um, and books in Book of Boba Fett. Fucking hey, as the Rancor trainer, he's only yeah. there for like a second. But but it's Danny such... fucking Trejo in Star Wars. Exactly, so. and because and it's Christopher Lloyd. It's because they're such like talented goddamn actors. They really make the most of those small moments. Yeah, but they're always small moments. They never give them like the whole episode, and that's fine, you know, because recognizable faces kind of have to be used sparingly, or it's going to take you out of it. Like Andy Serkis. I saw, I saw some people saying that. Um, Lizzo and Jack Black took people out of the episode. 
I think it worked for me. Mm. So something about something about Jack Black's like offbeat, just like goofy goofishness. He plays himself and it just works in like every different scenario. But Lizzo felt like a Star Wars character. To me, she felt like she authentically belonged in yeah. that room, in that universe. And I had absolutely no problem with it. It didn't take me out of it whatsoever. Yeah, it was like seeing Bill Murray in the Ant-Man movie. It was just kind of one of those... But even that was actually a bit more shocking than seeing Jack Black in in Star Wars. I think it was more surprising seeing Jack Black playing a previous Imperial versus just making him this um, eccentric... Like He could have been the same character, but the fact that they made him one of the... Um, Imperial, what uh, I can't think of the word right now. The Amnesty Program. Yeah, right? like it was, it was called, interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess that was kind of the point too, right? Because that was Christopher Lloyd's well, whole, he had whole to... deal of like you, your Duchess, you, you gave us away the moment you married him. Like that was kind right, of his right. whole thing. They had to fit him into the political landscape, so he had yeah. to have some sort of like Imperial connection, former Imperial, you know. Yeah. Well, we have a Patreon poll which has nothing to do with the episode we just watched. Uh, let's take a look. So we asked you guys, is Grogu going to say his first word this season? The votes are in with 45 votes total. 58% people think he's going to say his first word this season. We got yes. And then 42% say no. What do you think, Bendu? Is Grogu going to start speaking this season? We're going to get his first word. We could get one word. No, that's idea, all it would like... take. All it takes is one word. Yeah. I, I feel like that's I feel like it's not gonna happen. I say no because we haven't focused on Grogu enough this season. Are you kidding me? We got to see him do the little wrist rocket paintball paintball thing. He did get to, he did get to do the fighting in the in the very beginning, and he also has been knighted, but he didn't really do anything. He just got knighted because Lizzo thought he was cute, honestly. <laughs> that's true. Regardless. Um you, like that's true. You know you're right. There has been some development, so maybe he'll talk, but I still don't think so. Not this. I mean, season. we got to see the Order sixty six flashback with fucking Jedi Jar Jar. That's true, which is <clears throat> amazing. Jay says, "I honestly don't know. I want to think yes because it would mean that he will soon be able to take the creed. That is something I would be so excited for." That's true. That that needs to be a big moment, and I think that's a season four moment. Aiden Pullen says, "I'm going to say no, but if it does happen, it'll be in the last episode." Agreed. Agreed. TK421 Dova says, no, they'll save that for season six. Damn. Okay. So you think that's several seasons from now. Okay. It's possible. I hope we get six seasons of this show. We know that Dave Filoni's movie that ties it all up isn't even dropping to like 2029. So it's possible. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A long time. It's a know. long time to wait. Good to know. Ryan X says he already tried to say this is the way. So my guess is that he'll say something related to Din or Bo. That's my sick. question is who's going to voice him. Did he try to say this is the way I must've missed that. He like gurgle gargled it in. Um, okay. Okay. In the gauntlet. I think uh, Danny there was a Devito time when all three of them were in a voice. ship. So it had to have been the gauntlet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have to rewatch those episodes. Gus Delgado. I don't believe they have the balls. <laughs> they don't have the balls to give him a voice. It's true, though. They have to commit to a choice when they finally give him a voice. And that's like, that's going to make or break it for the next next generation of Grogu's like story. That's true. It is, it is a high stakes like decision, honestly. Noel Danda says, I'm on the fence, but I voted yes. However, I don't think this is the way will be the first thing he says. I think it would be more fitting if it's Mando. Yeah, if he says his dad, or like Din, even, you know? I feel like Bo has the edge there, because Bo is an easy word for a baby to say. Jason That's Beltran good. says, although I voted no, didn't he already say Poodoo? See, everyone's saying that he's already said stuff, like this is the way, and Poodoo. I'm missing No, this. he was I'm trying just, like, to. He didn't Poodoo actually Gaga, say you know? this is the way, but like, actually, if Dank Farrick was the first thing he said, that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, a little potty mouth. Yeah. That would fit his character. Ryan Medina says he's totally going to call Bo-Katan mom. That no. would be hilarious. That would yeah. be hilarious. Reese Hart, I think they'll save it for the next season, or if he does, it'll be the season finale. The second he starts talking, it means he's going to be able to take the creed and have to wear a helmet, which I don't see as something Disney wants as it takes away the markability of him being cute. Counterpoint, 
it adds the markability of now you have helmeted action figures as well as regular Grogu action figures. Yep. Not, if there's anything that Star Wars loves, it's creating variants of their characters. But you're right. They don't want to take away that cute little face either. Tristan Milner says, no, while we have seen Din teaching him to be a Mandalorian, no one's taught him any basic speech. Given last week's reception and all the fools that hate watch, I don't think they could handle a baby's first word moment. Mm -hmm. Heck, look at all the fools posting Order 66 gifts on every Young Jedi Adventures post for more proof. Yeah, well, you know, there's always going to be immature people that can't handle things, and that's not a good reason to not influence the writing of your TV show. You yeah. Know? Tell the story that you set out to tell and let the neckbeards do what neckbeards are going to do. There's, n there's no change in it. Maggie says, I hope not, though I also don't think he should stay silent. He's watchful, and hopefully when he does have something to say, it will be meaningful and or super powerful. He would want to choose his words carefully, as he's probably noticed his dad doesn't speak that much either. That's a really good point, actually. Din is really, like, sparse with his words. And that was... That was always something about Yoda as well, is that he would sort of sit there in the council chamber. He would kind of dominate the discussion, but Yaddle who would like barely get a word in. And when she did finally like drop her little bit of wisdom, like everyone would fall silent and listen to That's her. That's true. She like totally was the master of that, like less is more kind of delivery. And that's the next comment. James Bellafuil says, will Grogu speak like Yoda or speak like Yaddle? That's that's really the big kicker. Well, like, who's it? Wouldn't make sense for him to speak like Gro like Yoda. No, he wouldn't have picked that syntax up from anybody. You know, Yaddle clearly was raised by people who spoke regular grammar, and that's reflected in how she talks. So I feel like Grogu would be the same way. And the last comment is from Ice. Right now, I'm on the fence. He's definitely communicating more beyond just adorable coups like in previous seasons. There's definitely been a progression. I could see this happening in the finale, but this feels like something that might be saved for the f final episode of the series. The real question is, what will his first word be, and in what order will he speak? Backwards like Yoda, or normal syntax like Yaddle? Again, my vote is for Yaddle speak, just yeah. because he'll be learning from people like Din Djarin and Bo-Katan, who don't speak like Yoda. And I think that Yoda's speech is like a, like a nurture versus nature kind of thing. I can Actually... <clears throat> I don't know if Yoda's parents spoke that way. I feel like he may be a complete anomaly in, in talking that way. I could totally see Grogu for the first part, just kind of like pulling a Din Djarin and, and being like, bench? Is that a bench? <laughs> Are you a Jedi? When he Are talks to Luke Oh, man. What if he finally speaks and it's just Pedro Pascal doing a baby voice? Oh, my God. I mean, that would be <laughs> fucking hilarious. It would work. <laughs> They just they just chipmunk his ass. Oh yeah, they just oh, turn man. him out. Like, oh yeah, no, nah, that'd be they great. Could do it. Freddie Prince Jr. should voice Grogu. He's dead. <laughs> oh, you said Freddie Prince Jr. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, the episode is out. Are you ready, best friend? Yes. Do it. Coruscant. So beautiful. Very Blade Runnery right now. Ooh, Coruscant in the rain. Yeah. Super dude. Blade Runner. I wouldn't call that lively music. You down here for some sort of clandestine meeting? <laughs> oh, Bro. shit. That was a good shot. Just out of the mist. How are Viper droids operating on Coruscant without New Republic finding them? Code TK2755. That's her TK number. Report. And make it quick, as I am short on time. Magistrate Cargo was aided by Mandalorians. Which Mandalorians? I think you already know. Bo-Katan Kryze led a squadron of Mandalorians alongside Din Djarin and his covert. Continue with your mission. I shall deal with our Mandalorian friends. Hmm. He's mm. on a planet. He's not on a ship. Ooh. What? Whoa. Look at those. They're so like Macquarie looking. What are those? Fucking Snoke tanks? Easy for you to say, Captain. There's a fortune to be had plundering the hyperspace lane. Oh, God, it's all the other warlords. 
operations are gaining. Is that Paleon? Bro, this is amazing. Dude, that's fucking Paleon. That's Thrawn's right hand man. Unorganized remnant warlords. I'd recognize that mustache anywhere. Grand Admiral Thrawn's return will herald in the reemergence of our military. And provide Commandant Hux enough time to Oh my god, is that Brendel Hux? That's Hux's dad. Grand Admiral Thrawn is missing from your delegation. Because he's lost. Any word on when he will be able to... Yeah, but he's not that lost because Paleon's with him, dude. The Shadow Council. You have spoken of his... Okay, it's imminent. Imminent return. Perhaps it's time we look to new leadership. Project Necromancer is a place for that. Project Necromancer. Necromancer. Three Praetorian guards. Praetorian guards, bro? Like someone is concerned about an assassination attempt. They've already got Praetorian guards over at the observatory with Brendel Hux. I'm telling you, man, that's Snoke. You'll have your reinforcements. We shall We're gonna see Praetorian guards. Of the Mandalorians, once and for all. Long ha. live the Famous last words, man. So we don't get to see the breakout. I'm, I was just about to say, I'm still kind of miffed we don't get to see the his escape. But I'm really glad he's back and making the trouble fucking again. The spies. Oh, who's arriving? It's very Independence Day with this shadow. It's the Mandos with the reclaimed Architens. Look at the markings. God. my friend, Mandalorian Prime. Massive mythosaur painted underneath. There are welcome guests. Come. Your droids only look for symbols. Bro. Was that Mandalorian operating a little Dyson vacuum over there? <laughs> They're gonna land it? They're gonna land it. It doesn't just hover. Fuck yeah. They're here to stay. They're gathering. They're marshalling the forces. Fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. Look at this army of Mandalorians. You just offended everybody there. <laughs> I have the talking stick. Let us prepare a feast for our guests. Damn. So many Mandalorians Damn. on the screen right now. Damn. Oh, shit. Is he fixed? Oh, it's a oh mech? God, it's a mech. He's operating in from the inside? The Enzelin stripped IG down to his base motor functions. They removed his memory circuit. The pilot provides cognition. So he's just a vehicle. <laughs> oh my God, can Grogu drive him? Bad baby. Oh, it's the way. <laughs> this is such a ridiculous premise. I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He's gonna pilot IG-12 like a little fucking Gundam? Grogu is too young to operate heavy machinery. Maybe when he's older. No. What do you mean, no? I think he's saying he's old enough to operate it. Did Grogu just speak he, through he, the... Yes. No, at least let him try it out in my office. Yes. No. <laughs> Grogu, no. Grogu, yes. Yes. Yes, what? <laughs> yes. 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 Oh my god. Yes. 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 Because <laughs> yes. he can walk by himself? Or is it because he's tall? Like. Oh my god. Get the paper, though. Bail No. Yes. Hey, Google. No. Give it no. Hey! You break it, you buy it. It is time to retake our homeworld. We'll scout the surface, find out what remains of the Great Forge, and establish a safe perimeter. I need volunteers from both tribes. Paz Vizsla, Armorer, Koska Reeves, Axe Woves, Din Djarin. I will go. Grogu as well. 
Oh, and Grogu, yeah, of course. <laughs> Can't go anywhere without Grogu. I will go. I will go. I will go. Oh, shit. And more people, too. Oh, and we're doing it right now. Holy fuck. Okay. Oh, look at everybody. Look at everybody. This music is excellent, too. That's <laughs> that's the shot. That's right there. so cool. This is peak Star Wars right now. New Mandalore fleet. Oh, my God. Oh, Dropping look at that. Out of look at that. Mwah. You're right. This is peak Star Wars right now. <sighs> these these ship shots, Scouting I can't even deal with them. To <laughs> Grogu has not climbed out of IG-12. He's still in there. God, it's amazing. <sighs> the shattered domes, man. I was here when it happened. Oh, wow. Damn, dude. Oh, Death Watch. Woo! Look at this. God, that shot. That shot was so sick. Oh, yeah. That's a great shot. There, on the horizon. What is that? Is that a pirate ship? Look at that thing. Is that the voice of Lady Volkazan Freed? Who's that? Who's asking? More Mandos. We knew you would not forsake us, Lady Bo-Katan. But our blasters remain in your service. Who are you? You've just been living out in the wastelands this whole fucking time? They punished us. As a warning to the whole galaxy. Because we refused to surrender. I did surrender. In exchange for submitting to the Empire and disarming, all remaining cities and Mandalorian lives were to be spared. So that's how he got the dark saber from her. He tricked her. And then he betrayed me, and we were helpless to resist the purge of Mandalore. God. Are you Death Watch? Death Watch exists no longer. Are you Rook Cast? Dude, she must be thinking about her sister so hard right now. I'm surprised we haven't gotten a name drop. At this this late in the game still. I don't know if I can keep everyone together. And this blade is all I have to unify our people. I only know of this weapon what you taught me. What means more to me is honor and loyalty and character. Your song is not yet written. I will serve you until it is. Damn. He's bent the knee. Yeah, he did. That's fully what that was. Onward, Mandalorians! To the forge! To the forge. Hoist up the mainsail! Oh, shit. We haven't heard this in a while, like, mid-episode. Bringing all the injured Mandos back to the fleet. The armorer, okay. Bro, hopefully, what about the Imperials, oh god. though? Oh god, the Empire's on their way here because yeah, they dude. know that they know what's going on. I just had that thought. I just had. What that if thought. we lose the armorer and all these injured Mandos? Yep. You can't move an enforcer like that. It's a flank job, and you're about to submit. These primitives make up their own rules for everything. Okay, calm down. God, Paz Vizsla has no chill. Oh, flying knee. Should I step in? Neither side can step in. <laughs> Damn, Axe Wolves, come on. Ha. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the pause goes down hard, too. He's a heavy dude. Who is this kid? Why do they keep showing him? No. Grogu? No, 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 no. <laughs> the negotiator. General Grogu. You taught your apprentice well. You didn't learn that from me. 
Mm. Oh, the little nod. What the fuck uh, was that? What is going on? What is happening? Is it Godzilla? Is it the Mythosaur? No. Nah. The fuck is that? Oh shit, it's huge! Grogu, run! What in the Jesus. Jurassic Park right <laughs> you is that? No! We just lost a couple Mandos. What the hell was that thing? It must be one of the ancient beasts that was awoken in the burge that bo was talking about. Jetpacks. More Mandos? More survivors. No. Imperial Super Commandos! Shit, Gideon's forces. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. fuck. Stormtroopers in Beskar. I'll lay down cover. Come on, Axe. Go, go, go. Shit, they're flanking. Wait, at least they're like real people. These aren't droids. Well, I mean, they're wearing Beskar armor, but clearly they're not as good marksmen as the Mandalorians are. I mean, but I mean, they're not. They're Jesus, not... Bo just took a blast to the chest. No, you are losing no, everybody. No, fuck. Shit. Nice. Oh. Oh. Triple shot. Face shot. Nice. Oh. Knifed. Yes. Shot under the helmet, dude. They're not retreating. They're trying to get you to go somewhere. Yeah, they're 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 totally kiting you to a larger force. Oh, listen to the music. This is dangerous. What's with this random imperial ass archway in the middle of the Mines of Mandalore? This is dangerous. Yeah, they're being led into a trap. It's so clear. Look at him tanking with his best car. Ah, oh, yes! Look at this Mandalorian-ass, this uh, Imperial-ass looking place. This is a trap. This is a trap. Oh my god, TIE Bombers? The Interceptors? Oh god, that means the Praetorian Guards are here too. It's an no! Fuck. As soon as I saw that Imperial architecture, I knew this was bad. This was a trap. I think Paz Vizsla was out there, too. Oh, no, he's back there. Whoa! Fucking Moth Gideon. Look at him in his fucking Mando armor, dude. Disarm him. God. He has little maul horns. He's always wanted to be a Mandalorian. He has little maul horns. You were a talented people, but your time has passed. Mandalore will live on. You do not deserve that Beskar heart, bro. Why don't we take your fleet off the board while we still have oh, the God. prize? Activate the interceptors and bombers. No, no, no. God, those bombers look so good, though. <laughs> I should have killed you when I had yep. the chance. Let's skip the pleasantry, shall we? I believe this is the part where you return the Dark Saber to its rightful owner. You mean Palpatine? This is the way. Yes. And he just flies away like a bitch. Damn, they're all gonna sacrifice themselves to, to buy her time. Get the fuck out of there, guys! Oh, we're gonna lose Heavy Gunner. No, pause, don't be a hero! We're not leaving you behind! Go! There are too many! No! This is the way. This is the way. He's gonna take... God damn. Yeah, dude, he's gonna take as many as he can. Dude, he has a son! Terrible. 
At least that means the Vizsla Lion won't die here. Oh, his blaster's gonna overheat. Oh, shit. Yeah, it is. Nice. Oh, gonna go out like an absolute badass. I mean, technically, he's still wearing Beskar, right? So, yeah. <laughs> he just fucking slid that dude off the edge. Yeah, but then Gideon's gonna come and kill him. Is that the Praetorian Guards? Yes, it is! Holy shit, oh dude! Oh my god, look at that purple. You were a real one, pause. Oh. oh yeah, no, he's getting stabbed, stabbed. Oh shit. God. Damn. Man, he was one of the coolest, most unique-looking Mandalorians, too. Man, this episode was a lot, honestly. I really liked it. We got, like, it was, like, exciting as hell. I'm really sad that Pazvils is gone, but, like, man, we haven't even lost the fleet yet. That's going to happen next episode. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, All God, the interceptors dude. and bombers, interceptors like, they're about to go up there and wreck stuff. the air now. That's how the next episode's going to start, with them wrecking everything on the fleet. We got to see Captain Paleon. I knew it wow. was him before they even said his voice, dude. As soon as I saw that white mustache, I was like, it's got to be Paleon. And then he started talking about Thrawn. Like, yes. They and, really and, uh, are. And Brendel Hux. Dude, the Hux name. Yeah. Like. Armitage Hux's daddy. We literally, yeah. This was, this was literally a quilting episode. This was, this was sewing, sewing. It was pure setup for the finale, too. Like between the oh man, between the new trilogy and where we were with the new republic, or like where we are with the new republic, what the fuck giant creature was that thing? Like I don't know. I honestly don't know what it was called. It was fucking cool though. It was huge. It was ginormous. <laughs> it was like it was like Naboo Aqua creature, huge. But yeah, yeah, it was like Sando Aqua Monster. It was. I, th I think it's bigger than a Mythosaur. It might be around the same size as a Mythosaur, based on the size of the head when Bo Katan. But it had there. more. It had more armor. Like it was definitely a thicker skin sort of a thing. Like a, like a scaly Stegosaurus Godzilla type exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What about Grogu wearing IG twelve like a mech suit? Fucking hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. The fact that it can only say yes and no are Does that count as Grogu saying his first words? No. I think in a way it does. It's him using a hook on, <laughs> a hooked on phonics or like a no. Totally. He's using a soundboard. Exactly. It doesn't count. He's like it's awesome. like the videos of those pets who use like the buttons with the sound bites. The the Imperial Mandos. I guess they're not really Mandos, but the Imperial Beskar troopers, that's what I'm gonna call them. Looked fucking cool. I didn't quite put together what I was looking at when they were all standing in the hallway yeah. when Gideon was walking down, but then when they all came flying in, I like... It made more together. sense as to what oh, they were. I, yeah, I thought they were different uh, dark troopers or something. Also, the fact that he came out wearing Mandalorian armor, like... And called himself a dark, dark trooper? trooper like, get out of here. Like, he wants to blow himself so hard. He's so... He, dude, he's so full of himself. He's so a, full. he's obsessed with becoming a Mandalorian himself, but B, the way he's like, the most impressive thing about it is that it's got me in it. It's like... Get out of here. I can't wait for Din Djarin to kick your ass. Yeah. yeah. And the so fact that he gave we himself ended a little Darth Maul horns, too. It's like, why? Are you just trying to make the horns are sick. cool? You're because trying to, to make sure we know that he's the baddie. <laughs> he thinks it looks cool. And let's be honest, his helmet is actually pretty sweet. It's, yeah, but it's, it's not. It's a pretty sick look. But it's not that Gar Saxon sweet, though. No, like no, 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 no. Gar Saxon awesome. was like maximum. Yeah. Well, he had the biggest spikes you've ever seen. And, and yellow his, visor. His visor like glowed it. like yellow. He was all kinds of cool. But yeah, no, um, Din Djarin is now totally um, a captive. He doesn't have his jetpack either. He's like been disarmed. Bo-Katan is still out there with the rest of the Mandos. We lost Paz Vizsla. The armorer is in danger because she's headed to the fleet, which is about to get totally attacked by interceptors and bombers. And there's only one episode to go. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think of like what other... everything's going to pop off. The only the only thing that I can think of 
to like help them out space battle wise would be if the new republic decide, like randomly were to show up but why would they show up right because they know i mean they know that moff gideon broke out of prison so like well carson taven knows that but people aren't yeah. like listening to him That's and true. every time they do elia kane shows up and like shuts them down with her little meddling so it's like i if if anyone shows up it might be carson tava on his own you know like tra- maybe maybe he'll get trapper wolf to join him but i feel like the new republic has been like stymied by the double agents interference you that's know? true that's true yeah man it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for them to pull through this and i feel like there's a chance that they might not even succeed because we have a whole other season after this you know so there's a chance that they fail to take Mandalore. I really hope that they do pull it through, though, and that Paz Vizsla's sacrifice isn't in vain. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you've liked so far about the season. Uh, you can follow both of us on social media and Instagram as Kyle Katarn and The Sage Hope. So, yes, come uh, follow us. Leave us a like and a comment on what you think might be happening for the finale of The Mandalorian. Yes, sound off in the comments. We always love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our reaction to The Mandalorian Chapter 23. Uh, this reaction has been edited by Nerd Chronic. To comply with fair use, we cut it down to 10 minutes of licensed footage for use here in the reaction. If you want to check out the full-length uncut version of this reaction, it's available on Patreon. There's a link in the description of the video to the Patreon page. Supporting us on Patreon not only allows us to do what we do, but we're able to continue making improvements to the channel as well, and we really appreciate all the support, so thank you. Check out the rest of the channel for more content reactions and reviews. Thanks again, and as always, may the force be with you.